Just a quick disclaimer before we start, I had no intention of making this project into a YouTube video. As such, half of the pictures are vertical because I was originally posting this to Snapchat, and I didn't take nearly enough pictures and videos of the whole thing. With that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video. So on January 12th, I was talking with a friend of mine on Discord when the topic of balloons came up, specifically this awesome story about a bunch of people escaping East Germany on a hot air balloon. And I'm like, hey, I've, I've liked hot air balloons for a while, what if I tried to build one? So I built a hot air balloon. This is the Mark 1 design, I basically took a trash bag and strapped a candle under it, and I was really naive about how much it would lift off. I tested it once indoors by lighting the candle, and uh, it didn't go anywhere. In fact, it actually melted the bag. At this point, it was already 3am, so I did what any reasonable person would do. I stayed up until sunrise making hot air balloons. So after the failure of my first design, I realized I needed a much bigger balloon, I needed a much more powerful fuel source, and I needed to go outside because otherwise I was probably going to burn the house down. I also decided I needed a fancy naming scheme, so I founded Stevens Aeronautics and Balloon Research Agency, or SABRE for short. The first balloon I named the Ascender Mark 1, so now it was time to work on the Ascender Mark 2. I decided to switch my fuel source to burning paper. It was readily available and I had a lot of it. To get a feel for how big the flames would be, I took a metal cup, ripped up a bunch of paper and stuffed it in there and set it on fire. Then I built the Mark II's balloon envelope out of straws, a large trash bag, and some wooden dowels that I stole from my sister. No, Sarah, I am not sorry. It was too windy outside, so I did it inside the garage but with the doors open for ventilation. It's also worth knowing that I kept a large bucket of water on hand in case the balloon fire got out of control. The first test of the Mark II design involved the burner assembly being on the ground, separate from the balloon. My ultimate goal was to carry this along with the balloon, but baby steps here. And then, something amazing happened. It flew. The Ascender Mark II's balloon lifted off of the ground for a few glorious seconds before crashing back down and the bag also melted. But it flew, and I was just so happy to see something fly. And it flew upwards pretty fast, so I was under the assumption that I actually had a lot of extra weight to work with. So I was like, okay, I can build the Mark III, which will carry the fire along with it, and then I'll go to bed. Oh boy, how very wrong I was. So for the Mark III design, I took the Mark II design and added extra reinforcements to it because it was getting kind of floppy. I added landing legs, and then I added an aluminum foil gondola to carry the burning paper. I attached that to the frame with paper clips and string, and attached a Lego minifigure to be the pilot because I was really hopeful that this one was going to fly. Spoiler alert, it didn't fly because it's way too heavy. I kept piling on paper, but all that succeeded in doing was further melting the balloon. The Mark IV design was essentially the Mark III design, but optimized for mass. I took out the wind owls, I took out the reinforcements, and then I took out the landing gear as well. That meant I had to design a launch stand, and it would probably, like, explode as soon as it landed, but hey, baby steps. And I also lightened the gondola to be only one layer of aluminum foil thick instead of four. Unfortunately, all of my videos of the Mark IV seemed to have gone missing, which is a shame because they were really good videos. I did three different tests with the Mark IV design. In the first test, I used one piece of paper as fuel. It didn't lift off, but I could feel it was a bit lighter. On the second attempt, I used two pieces of paper as fuel instead of one. One corner of it looked like it was going to lift off, but it got stuck on the launch pad due to friction, so I gently lifted it off of the launch pad and released it. And it hovered for like half a second and then started going down really slowly. It wasn't flying, but it was really, 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 really close. So I did a third test using three pieces of paper as fuel instead of two. Unless it was an illusion, it rose off of the launch pad by about an inch and then got stuck on the launch pad again. So like with the last test, I gently grabbed it off of the launch pad and released it. It flew down slightly but the wind blew it sideways and then it crashed and burned in the snow not ever having gained altitude. When it crashed, the bag kind of fell on off of it and the fire severely melted the bag like it was half of its original size. I could tell that I was on the verge of being able to make something fly. Like, I was right there. It was just so close. So I built the Mark IV A. I took the chassis of the Mark IV, lightened it even further, sadly having to get rid of the Lego guy, and I gave it a fresh bag. Unfortunately, by this point, it had gotten a bit too windy to do my testing outside, so I did it in the garage again. However, during this test, when I used three and a half sheets of paper as fuel, it didn't lift at all, and it completely melted. I was really perplexed at the time, but looking back on it, what I think happened was that the slight breeze on the outside was giving the envelope a little cooling effect so it didn't melt as much, but in the garage, there wasn't even a slight breeze. But I'll probably never be sure. At this point, I had taken the trash bag design pretty much as far as I could. There's probably a few extra grams to shave off somewhere, but really, it's not very practical to make it any lighter than it currently is. If I tried for another few prototypes, I probably would have gotten it to fly. But here at Stevens Aeronautics and Balloon Research Agency, we don't make things fly, we make things fly well. Or not at all, I guess. So I started looking into alternate options. So first I looked to see if we had any bigger trash bags. We did, but unfortunately it was way heavier and heat deformed it around the same temperature, so it wouldn't have worked. I considered using paper and newspaper, but those would be way heavier and also they'd be flammable, which is not a really good idea to have your balloon envelope made out of something that's flammable. Hmm, what comes in large sheets is very lightweight and isn't flammable. 
I thought, oh hey, wax paper. The wax is inflammable, it'll provide an insulating layer and will melt. It was only halfway through construction that I realized for the first time in my life that wax actually does burn and doesn't just melt. Like seriously, how did I get to age 18 without realizing that wax is flammable? So I messed up the shape significantly and I ended up with a one foot by one foot by three foot rectangular prism of wax paper. I also decided to try a few new things, namely shaping the gondola like a cup instead of as a tray. This turned out to be a very bad mistake as it severely limited the amount of oxygen that the fire could get. I knew that my chances of getting the Mark V into the air were very slim. It had about the same volume as the earlier balloons, but was much, much heavier. My only hope was getting the air inside the envelope far hotter than I had been able to previously. Basically, I was betting that the temperature that wax paper caught fire at was far enough higher than the temperature that plastic deformed at, that it would be enough to make up the difference of the extra weight. The first test used one piece of paper as fuel, and I didn't expect it to lift off. I was just making sure it wouldn't catch fire, and it passed that test with flying colors, except, you know, without the flying and I guess without the colors. The second test used two sheets of paper. It also didn't lift off. The third test used three sheets of paper, which was basically the maximum I could fit in that tiny gondola. At this point, I knew it was never gonna fly under its own power. So I started piling up sheets of paper on the ground at the base of the balloon to see if I could get it to lift off at all. I think I got up to like 10 sheets of paper worth of fuel, and then suddenly, I saw one corner lift off the ground. But a quarter of a second later, Mark V decided to burst into flames. This is the first time I've had to use the bucket of water, and I hope it'll be the last. So at this point, it was probably around 10 a.m., and I finally went to sleep. A short while after I'd woken up, I'd settled on a new design. The Ascender Mark VI would be a 2x2x2 two by two by two foot cube of newspaper. The tremendous increase in volume compared to the previous balloons would hopefully be enough to offset the mass of the newspaper, and the opening at the base would hopefully be wide enough that the flame from the gondola wouldn't catch the whole thing on fire. Also, I changed the gondola back to a big flat sheet of aluminum foil instead of a cup. Because the balloon was too weak to stand up under its own strength, the balloon was suspended between two towers on six lengths of fishing line that would detach from the towers as the balloon went up. Unfortunately, I did not record the test flights of the Mark VI very well. But there were definitely a few tests where I started burning paper and it didn't lift off just to test if it would or would not catch on fire. And then they slowly kept adding more paper. Lift off! I'm, I'm stabilizing it, but it's flying! It's flying under its own power. I am stabilizing it so it doesn't fall over. But it flew! It was flying! It was flying! <laughs> Now if only I can get to do that controlled. But then I ran into a weird problem. I heavily suspected the Mark VI had enough lift to lift off, but something about the design made it inherently unstable. It would always be one corner unevenly rising, and the whole balloon would want to tip over. So I significantly upgraded the tether. Instead of one line coming down from the middle, it would be four lines, one from each corner that all met in the middle, and then connected to the normal tether, so that as long as it was on the edge of the tether, the balloon would remain upright. And then I tested it again. Flying! Uh, it's not very well. I'm gonna release the tether a bit more so it fl- Oh shoot, uh, that's gonna catch the chair, maybe. Cause the chair's wood and it fell. Uh, but, for- you- you saw it. It was flying. It lifted up. It didn't get quite clear of the launch pads. But it was flying. It was flying! It was flying and I have video- As you can tell, a lot went right in that test, and I was so excited that I'd finally gotten something to float up again. Unfortunately, the proximity of the fishing line stabilization tether to the super hot gondola caused some of the stabilization tether lines to heat up and eventually snap. This also happened a few times with the lines that connected the gondola to the balloon itself. I simply fixed that by making the lines longer, and I tried again. Good. I feel it. It's... Jesse? No. No. Alright. It's... Ooh, it's smoking on top. Ooh, it's hey! Oh, <laughs> uh, it melted. Oh, it tried. It went up. Yes, it did. It went up really hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I hold up that corner, it'll... Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it, the, the thing holding the gondola broke. Yep. Which has not happened before. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna... Anymore, I'm gonna have to, like, rebuild the thing because it's falling apart. But yeah. It flew, like, it, it, it lifted off. And, and then properly fell apart. But you can see in that video, it lifted off and it was fine for like a second. The issue there was that uh, the stabilization tether actually had a lot of friction uh, with the pulley system, so I'm gonna upgrade the pulley system in the future. And when I noticed that and finally released it, it shot up so fast that when it hit the end of the tether, the fishing line, which was already significantly weakened from the heat, just kind of snapped and the balloon fell apart in midair. Now, I wish I could tell you that I fixed the issues with this balloon and flew it again the, a few hours later, but unfortunately at this point, I was kind of feeling a bit burned out with the whole balloon thing. No pun intended.
and I had to start packing to go back to college. In addition, the fire got so hot that the entire frame of the balloon actually melted, and it's a whole lot more damaged than it seems. However, this project is certainly not over yet. I've done a lot more work, mostly on the planning side, since the Mark VI, and I hope to share that with you as soon as it comes to something. I have already come up with a bunch of exciting design ideas, but I think it would be better if I left those for part two. I have no idea how to end this video. Bye.